This is part 8 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss an easier way of creating reactive forms using the form builder class. In Angular, there are two ways to create a reactive form. One way is by explicitly creating instances of form group and form control classes using the new keyword. We discuss this approach in parts 4 and 6 of this Angular 6 tutorial. Another way is by using the Angular form builder class. This class provides syntactic sugar that shortens creating instances of form group, form control or form array. We haven't discussed form arrays yet, we'll discuss them in our upcoming videos. So the important point to keep in mind is the form builder class reduces the amount of code that we have to write to build complex reactive forms. This class has three methods, control, group, array. As the name implies, Control method constructs a new form control instance, group method constructs a new form group instance, and array method constructs a new form array instance. We'll discuss form arrays in our upcoming videos. So on the left, we are creating a form model by explicitly creating instances of form group and form control classes using the new keyword. And on the right, we are using the form builder class. Notice on the form builder class instance, we are calling its group method to create a form group. And what's a form group? A form group is a collection of child controls and nested form groups. When we are using the form builder class to create the child controls, we just specify the name of the child control and then its value. We specify the value for the child control using its first element. So it's the default value that we are specifying here. So we want an empty string as the default value for full name. And then similarly, we are creating a form control for email. Email is the key and its default value is again an empty string. And then we have our nested form group. Notice again, to create the nested form group, we're using the same group method of the form builder class. So this creates here the root form group, and this group method here creates a nested form group. Within this nested form group, we again have three child controls, skill name, experience in years, and proficiency. And we create them again the same way. Specify the name of the form control and its default value as the first element of the array. This array can have other elements as well. We're using those elements, we specify synchronous and asynchronous validators. We'll discuss validation in our upcoming videos. We have our create employee component class right here. Now for us to be able to use the form builder class, we'll have to first import it from Angular Forms package. Now the important point to keep in mind is this form builder class is provided as a service. So for us to be able to use it within this create employee component class, we will have to inject it into this class by using the constructor. Let's call the instance FB, short for form builder, and obviously the type is form builder. Now instead of explicitly creating instances of form group and form control classes using the new keyword, let's use this form builder instance. Notice on the form builder instance, we're using the group method to create the root form group and to this method, we pass an object. This object contains child controls and nested form groups. To create a child control, we specify a key value pair. Key is the name of the child control. In our case, we want our child control to be named full name and the value is an array. The first element of this array specifies the default value for our full name child control. In our case, we want an empty string as the default value. The second and third elements are used to specify synchronous and asynchronous validators. We'll discuss these when we discuss form validation in our upcoming videos. Similarly, let's specify a form control for email. The key is email. Again, the default value for this form control is an empty string. Next, we want a nested form group. The key for the nested form group is skills. And to create the nested form group, we use the form builder instance again and then call its group method. So the group method here is going to create our nested form group. And to this group method, again, we pass an object. And this object is going to contain the child controls within this nested form group. We want three child form controls within this nested group, skill name, experience in years 
and finally proficiency. Notice the form looks exactly the same way as before. Now let's launch browser developer tools just to make sure we don't have any errors in the browser console. Everything looks good. Now notice each form control has a default value of an empty string. We can actually see that in the value that we are printing right here. Notice we have each form control name and its default value an empty string. Even for proficiency, notice the default value is an empty string. Now let's say instead of having an empty string as the default value, we want beginner. So when the form initially loads, by default, we want this beginner radio button to be selected. And in the form model, the value should also be beginner. For this, all we have to do is, instead of using an empty string as the default value, use beginner. Notice by default, beginner radio button is selected and the value here is also beginner. Also notice, as we start to type within these form controls, the displayed form group and form control properties change accordingly. So this form is working exactly the same way as before. At the moment, we are using the form builder class and as you can see, it reduces the amount of boilerplate code that we have to write to build complex reactive forms. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.